It's time to get back to the MR2 beams engine swap. Last episode, we removed the old 5S FE engine, and now it's time to get the new engine ready to go in. The all-star crew returns for this second part. We of course got Zion, the amateur mechanic, me, the amateur videographer, and whatever amateur friends show up who have nothing better to do. It's been about a week since we dropped the engine, and Zion still hasn't cleaned up the cat litter he used to soak up the massive oil spill. He did, however, get a little dolly for the beams engine, so I guess that's something. So the first thing really to do is get the original transmission off the old engine and mount it to the new engine. They should be compatible, so it should be pretty straightforward. However, it's never that easy, because despite all the bolts being undone, the transmission refuses to come off. Granted, it probably doesn't help the thing is on the floor. Even with Isaiah yanking on the other end, it still doesn't want to cooperate, so we called in the heavy artillery and Andrew brought over some pry bars to hopefully break it free. Obviously, these are good for cramming in there and getting leverage, but you do want to be careful not to damage anything and ruin the surface, but luckily, these did the trick though. Hopefully, mounting the transmission to the new engine goes a bit smoother. Now we got to remove the clutch and flywheel, which will also be reused, so we're gonna pop the thing awkwardly onto a dolly and get a better angle. The clutch unbolted easy and just needs some very light prying to get off. A little dirty, but should be fine to reuse. The flywheel, on the other hand, is very tightly torqued on, so not only do you need to get a lot of force to get them loose, but the flywheel also rotates as you do it. So what you gotta do is have someone else hold the other side of the crank in place while you break each bolt loose. Uh, you also wanna go in a star pattern to make the pressure even. Then after that, you can loosen them all the way, again, in a star pattern. Well, of course that didn't work. The original flywheel bolts are too small for the new engine and don't even fit. So that's a bit of an issue. So now we gotta head into town and get the correct bolts. Usually we just get replacement bolts at the hardware store, but stuff like this needs to be very specific as in the right size and also the right strength to handle the torque. So we drove over to the Toyota dealership to order the exact OEM ones. While Zion talked with the parts counter, we got to check out some cool stuff they had on display like this old Land Cruiser, this Toyota truck, and also the new Supra. They even let us sit in it. Now, I personally don't really care that the car is German, but I do wish it came with a manual, but that all being said, I wouldn't even buy one of these if I had the money anyways, so I'm obviously not the market it's aimed at. The reality is, most people buying luxury cars these days just don't care about manuals and would rather have something easy to drive that they can show off. It turns out the dealership doesn't happen to have flywheel bolts for a 90s MR2 in stock, surprisingly, so they had to order them from Japan. It'll take a week to get here, so we just headed back. Pretty much, we just hung out and enjoyed some Sapporo, which I bought to celebrate the first episode, which came out yesterday. Well, it's been about a week now, the bolts came, but apparently it turns out the clutch and flywheel are not going to be compatible with the new setup, so Zion also had to order new stuff for that. So today, we're going to focus on something else uh, that also needs to get done, wiring. Since it's a different engine and ECU, the whole wiring harness has to be replaced. Zion already mounted in the fuse box here, as well as plugged it into the new Mines ECU. One annoyance is the taillight plugs are not compatible though, so those will have to be modified. The plug for the other side taillight is also just straight up not there, so not sure how that's supposed to go. But now the big thing is to feed the wiring harness into the cockpit and figure out how it's supposed to all hook up in there. After flipping through the shop book for 10 minutes and finding nothing helpful, we decided to just go for it. Pretty much what you gotta do is first remove this weird speaker box lid behind the driver's seat. Then after that, you're able to lift the carpet up and reveal the hole where the wire passes through. The only issue though is of course, it immediately then runs over behind the sidewall. So now we gotta remove a few screws and pry out the snap clips. Well, we are one step closer, but now it goes under the carpet again and over to the dash, so out comes more interior trim. And finally, we gotta remove the bottom half of the dash and chase the wires up. After further inspection, it seems the wires actually just end in the footwell, so I guess that's convenient. 
We got all of them unplugged except for this one thick one that has this weird shield on it. It seems to be a ground and if you take off the cover then you can actually just unbolt it from the other end. And with all that done, the wire harness is free and the car interior is half torn apart. Of course, we also had to feed the harness through that small hole in the firewall, which was its own little project, but still, we did it. And that's wiring done for now until the engine is in and we can actually hook things up. Alright, it's been a couple weeks since we last worked because Zion had to order some new clutch stuff. Turns out the old clutch and flywheel won't do for this engine, uh, so we had to get a new set. Probably for the best these get replaced now than later anyways. The first thing is these all come coated in some oil to prevent rusting, so you gotta clean them off. And now the flywheel just slides on in place and we finally get to use our authentic JDM bolts to hold it down. Well, it's only been like 5 minutes and we already ran into a problem. Zion's cheap torque wrench suddenly broke, so you know what that means. Harbor freight time. Doesn't matter if it's snap-on or harbor freight, lifetime warranty means lifetime warranty. Anyways, after almost an hour of an excursion, it's time to finally get this thing taken care of. It's tricky to torque the bolts without moving the flywheel itself, but we had Isaiah hold the thing locked to keep it still. Also, when installing the clutch, you're supposed to use this clutch alignment tool, and that alone was a treasure hunt for Zion to find one. But now, the last step is just to torque the clutch in place, which thankfully had no issues. What did take forever was this throwout bearing. This is one of those things you just want to swap while you're at it, because you're pretty much never going to want to take the whole transmission off just for this. Even with the combined brain power of both Zion and Isaiah, it took them 15 minutes to realize they were installing it backwards the whole time. But you gotta learn somehow, I guess. With that done, we can rejoin the engine and transmission, which is a pretty big step, but without a real engine stand or hoist, mating the two is a lot more difficult when you're doing it on the floor. After a bit of effort, we all just agreed it's pretty much not going to happen, so now it's time to call it a day and go back on the hunt for more stuff. We are back yet again, this time Zion bought an engine stand. It's not actually for the Beam's engine, but for the old 5S so he can get it off the ground and out of the way. He also picked up an engine hoist he's borrowing. Apparently there's one guy in Bellingham who owns this hoist, and it just gets passed around to every car guy in town. Zion didn't even pick it up from the owner, he grabbed it from the last guy who was borrowing it. So the plan today is to have the beam's engine tipped on its front, then use the hoist to lift the transmission on top and we line it up from there. Even with the hoist holding the weight, it's still a bit tricky to line everything up just right. Though we have the bolt holes lined up, what is actually creating the issue is the spline on the inside not lining up right with the clutch. But with some trial and error, Zion eventually got it, and with that we're going to call it a day again, though a short one, because now the next step is to put the engine back in the car, which is going to need its own day to do, so for now Zion is just going to get the old engine mounted up to the engine stand. It's a couple days later, and the goal is to get the engine in the car and mark off another big step in the swap. Zion also repurposed his transmission as a quaint little coffee table. Zion started to put the transmission bolts back in, but it's a little easier said than done because they are all different sizes and it seems some of the old bolts aren't quite long enough, so you know what that means. A stop to our favorite store, but first, some DQ to okay. energize up. Uh, order. And then one more. But with that all taken care of, we got the new bolts, got the transmission finally mounted up, and also even swapped the shifter bushings with some new spherical ones while we're at it. Now Zion's doing some last second preparation for the engine bay, and the other guys are doing last second things on the engine. Also last thing is we can't forget to remount the clutch slave cylinder. And after some celebration dancing, it's finally time to embark on the grand task of getting this engine back in. Getting the old one out went pretty terrible, but hopefully this goes smoother. The problem is a dolly with the engine on top is going to be too tall to fit under the car, so the next best thing is to use cardboard to hopefully slide it into place. 
It's definitely an idea that went about as bad as it sounded, but with lots of effort from the whole team, it just barely fit and made its way under. With it generally in place, the next plan is to use the hoist to lift the engine up to where it's supposed to be. The original idea was to go from the back, but the hoist doesn't quite reach over the trunk enough, so we're gonna go from the side. Of course, in these extremely high pressure steps, it's important to stay mentally and physically at your peak by eating some Himalayan salt chips. Anyways, the chain is a bit too long and there only seems to be one hook on the engine, so we had to wrap the thing around to keep the engine balanced as it goes up. We actually even tried to use the second hook off of the 5S, but it didn't really fit into place the same way, but with enough work, we were able to get things balanced enough. And up goes the engine, a lot smoother so far than when the 5S came out. While the engine that was hooked on the hoist by a bunch of amateurs sketchily hangs above him, Andrew is taking one for the team by going under and installing the center engine mount. It took some coordination and shifting around to get it to line up right, but it went in simple enough. The side mounts need to be installed next, but are much tighter to get back in place. Zion also had to do some digging around to find the correct bolts for everything. We also got a jack under the engine to help move it around and give extra support. After an hour of messing around with stuff, we've been having issues getting the side mounts to line up correctly and even notice the engine seems to be sitting at a strange angle. After doing some looking around as to what was causing it, we realized the center engine mount was actually installed upside down, which led to the misfit. Luckily, it wasn't too difficult to flip around. Now the engine fits properly, while before the intake was way too high and slanted. It's starting to get late now, but thankfully the other mounts all line up correctly now, so I'm gonna head out and trust in their ability to slap in the last couple bolts in place. It's been a couple days, Zion is in classic MR2 mechanic position and doing a couple last second things on the car. As you can see, the engine is looking sweet in place. Zion had to get a new filter and tubing because the old one from the 5S was too small for the much larger Beam's throttle body. Only thing is the old airbox took ridiculously long to get out because of some hidden bolt. Definitely would have been a good idea to do while the engine was out. The new air filter went in simple enough after figuring out where to mount it. It's kind of interesting because the filter has a plug and seems to double as the airflow sensor. One annoying thing is Zion is missing the throttle cable bracket, so he's gotta figure out what to do about that. Other than that, the rest of the day was spent slowly trying to figure out where the extra loose wires went, cause trust me, there were quite a few we found. Well, it's been almost a week now and not much progress has been made. Zion got the suspension back together and the exhaust installed, which is pretty cool and he ended up using the 5S throttle bracket, which looks a little lame, but does the job for now. But still, the car is having electrical issues and he can't hook the battery up without sparks flying, so he's not really sure what's going on. So we're gonna call it an episode now cause the engine is at least in place and hopefully next time we can figure out what is going on and deal with troubleshooting and final touches. A little anticlimactic, but that's how it is sometimes with car projects. Anyways, check out Zion's accounts and see y'all next time, hopefully sooner than later.